I'm Meredith with Extreme Terrain and welcome to this installment of Customer Builds. Now, this is a series where we showcase different rigs from our customer build pages right here on our site to hopefully give you some ideas or even some inspiration for your ride at home. Now on this episode, we're gonna be catching up with Ben from California about his trail built 2017 at JKU. If you wanna see more about Ben's build, including a full breakdown of his mods list, you can check out his page right here on the site or for those of you watching here on YouTube, you can click the link down below. So what do you say that we connect with Ben and check out his build? Hey Ben, thank you for joining with me today. Hey, no problem. So let's jump right into it. We have a lot to cover. Um, let's start off with the suspension. Yeah, I got the Terraflex three inch with the upper and lower control arms, and I just added an inch and a quarter body lift on it. And I have the, the Falcon shocks. Now, which Falcon shocks do you have? Well, I started with the 9550s that came with the original lift that I got, and I blew one of the shocks out, so I swapped it. I have the 3.3 Falcons, which are unbelievable. The quality of the ride, it's just, I recommend them for anybody that's got a, that goes off-roading. Now, do you adjust them a lot while you're off-roading, to and from the trail, as well as on the trail? Yeah, I usually set them on one because I usually do a lot of rocks. So on the soft setting, it's, it's a nice smooth ride. Well, as smoothly you're going to get on a good Jeep. Yeah, of course. Now, do you put it on a stiffer setting when you take the Jeep home? Yeah, it's usually on three. I haven't really messed around with the two settings where it's a little bit more customized. But the three is I usually, that's what I usually run when I'm on the street. Do you have any like accommodating mods as far as the lift kit is concerned? Um, drive shaft or anything to correct any angles? Uh, the drive shafts, I have Tom Woods 1310s front and rear. And then awesome. I have the Terraflex Monster control arm up front. As far as the wheel and tire, can you tell me a little bit more about that setup there? Yeah, that's a fuel rim. It's a 17 inch. And I have the 35 by 12 and a half middle ridge grapplers, which are unbelievable. About 48,000 miles on them and they still got a lot of tread. I would recommend those. But once I get through these, I'll go from the 35 inch to the 37. That's right where I'm up. Right where I want to be. I, I won't upgrade to a Ford. 37 is about right for that setup I have now. Once you go to the 37s, do you plan on doing anything with your suspension, building the axles, anything going on there? No, I think the way the Rubicon comes, the 410s, I think it'll be fine. I'll have to see after I drive it because I've never had 37s on it. I hear yeah. it's a little sluggish, so I might re-gear it. It just depends. Um, now, moving into some of the armor that you have, starting in the front, can you tell me a little bit more about your armor and the accessories that you have? Yeah, the, the DV8 front uh, stubby bumper, which is great. And then underneath that, I have the skid plate that protects the, uh, the disconnects, the electronic disconnects. And then in the rear, I don't have the, the name of that bumper that I bought from you guys. Then the barricade, I have the barricade rock rails, which are, I've rested that entire Jeep up on a rock and it held the entire weight of the Jeep without even flexing that. So the rock rails are really, really strong. That's incredible. Yeah, and that's, I mean, obviously you have a lot of things with you while you're off-roading, so that's a heavy Jeep to put on that rocker. Now, as far as the tire carrier and everything is concerned, can you tell me a little bit more about that and why you chose a tub-mounted tire carrier? Well, the first one I had on there, I actually took it back. I took it off, it was an old, heavier tire. But with the DB8, I kind of liked it, the look, the way I was able to relocate the license plate in the middle. Then I got the poison spider brake light, and it really supports that tire nicely when I'm off-roading. There's not, there's no noise that comes off the back of it. Now the one I had on previous to that, it would rattle a lot and bang against the back door. And the one that you previously had, was that a tub mounted or bumper mounted? It was a tub mounted. It was the heavier okay. carrier that came right off the bolts that came out on the, the, the swing door. Oh, and yeah. it actually pulled, yeah, it actually pulled the bolts away from the door. So oh, boy. if I would have kept it on there, it probably would have messed up the back door a little bit more. Oh no. Well, I mean, that DV8 carrier has been tried and true to a bunch of Jeeps for a very long time. And I personally think that it looks really good. And what those are also good for, which you are doing right now, is uh, mounting recovery and equipment on the back. Well, most of the time I do day trips. So I've used the fuel tank only twice on a long trip. And I have the three gallon roto pack. And then I just have the 48 inch high lift jack. Now, do you have any other accessories as far as recovery go, or even any other accessories on the front or the side? No, I carry those in the back. I have a trail axe and a shovel. And then I have the winch, the 10,000 pound uh, Minivill winch in the front. Now, have you ever had to use this Minivill winch? 
several times. Some friends don't have a wench, so I kind of help them out, and I've actually pulled myself out a couple times as well. Oh, wow. So it seems to be working very well. Mainly mud. Mud has, is not friendly with that jeep. <laughs> no, mud, it sucks you right in, and it's very difficult to get out. Especially if you go out by yourself, that's the first thing I put on there. I figured I'm going to be out there by myself or if my son's with me, it'll help us get out of a jam, which I don't oh, recommend yeah. going out by yourself. But when you do, it's you got to have a winch. Can you tell me a little bit about your lighting? I know you have some aftermarket lighting on your Jeep. I had some on the bull bar. I took those off. I didn't care for them too much. I have a 50-inch light bar, and I run, I'm running rock lights on it as well. Now, do you have um, any additional lighting as far as the stock lighting is concerned? Have you upgraded any of the stock lighting? No, the lighting that came with the 17, it's already like uh, in there, but it's LED, right on. LED, I think? I think uh, the, the 17 Rubicon came with all that. I didn't have to change any of those headlights out. It came like that. What about the taillights? Yes, I think they're the, I want to say the name right, the Re Rexon or? Raxion? Yeah, Rocky? you have the list of first. Yeah, I changed. I, ch I did change up, which they were a little snug because they're a little, they're a little bit wider than the regular ones, so it's harder to get it in there with that DD8 tire carrier. But I mean, it works. They, they. Yeah, I mean, they still look really good, and it seems like they're holding up very well, especially with you out um, in the dirt, mud on the trail. Um, and they look really sleek, especially with the kind of color scheme that you have going on. Yeah, I wanted to change the look completely. As soon as I got the Jeep stock, I wanted everything plastic off of it. But I think this setup that you're running right now is incredibly good. Hey, thanks, I put a lot of hours into it. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. There's really no bolt unturned on this thing. As far as the interior is concerned, can you tell me more about what you have going on in the interior? Yeah, I got the, the best top uh, mud mats. That's probably one of the first things I put in there as well because it was going to be dirty in there. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'm running a CB. I changed the shift knobs out to the Drake, both for the four-wheel oh. drive shift knob and the automatic shift knob. So I run a eight-inch pad for navigation, which is really important because I've been out and you can get lost real easy. <laughs> yeah, you can. So it does have um, the off-road navigation on there? Yes, I downloaded an app on a pad that I put in there and I run, oh, a, I run that. That's awesome. So you can get to wherever and back from wherever. <laughs> yeah, and then the Carolina Metal, I got the Carolina Metal front and rear grab handles. They're aluminum, but I got to tell you, when it's 110 here, and you have the hard top on, you don't want to grab that handle, you'll burn your hand. But they do look good though, but I mean, I get a lot of compliments oh, yeah. on those. But. As far as performance goes, I know that you're out on the trail a lot and functionality and suspension and traction are all great things, but having some power and performance behind it is also um, something to keep in mind. They have the AFE cold air intake oil filter, and I paired that up with the MagnaFlow uh, catback exhaust. Sounds really good. I think it gives it enough power to where those 35s, it feels like it's it's running on stock tires. I don't feel it's sluggish at all with 35s. When you step on it, you can hear it. It, does, it doesn't sound like a V6. It sounds, it sounds pretty clean. Well, the other thing as far as the exterior goes, the hood. Can you tell me a little bit more about the hood and your decision process behind that? Well, when I bought the Rubicon, the stock one had no vents, so it did run hot. It does get hot here. And the first thing I noticed was the temperatures, because I could put the temperatures up on the dash. Mm -hmm. And when I put this hood on, it ran about 20 degrees cooler. So oh, that wow. in itself was a, yeah, it was a very, it was a good benefit. Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of cutouts on there, the vents on the side. I can only imagine the heat dispersion with that. Yeah, I, I threw a wrap on it. I didn't paint it. I had it wrapped. I only paid like 300 bucks to have it wrapped. It'll last a few years after the wrap starts peeling a little bit. Then I'm going to go ahead and match it to the granite crystal metallic. Um, now, do you have any more plans as far as the future is concerned? I know that you want to move up to 37s, but any other big ideas or inspiration that you have? For sure, a rooftop tent. Yeah. This way. I would stay out on the trail an extra day instead of coming home that day. Oh, that's so awesome. I like to get a, yeah, rooftop. Now, do you have, obviously, you have to have a roof rack with that. Do you have any ideas as far as a roof rack is concerned? Terraflex makes a real low profile one. This way, maybe I can get it into my garage with the rack on it and just have to take the top of the tents off the top. I like the fact that this is not your everyday build. There's a lot of custom stuff and a lot of um, parts that work really well together that aren't the the average build, and I really do like that. And the color scheme and the way things came out, it was just add-on, add-on, and it just kind of came together like that. It wasn't really planned. 
But the overall where I'm at right now with the Jeep, I'm really happy with it. I would definitely yeah. get rid of it. Yeah, I think you should be happy with it. <laughs> well, I think that wraps it up as far as everything goes for your mods. I know we just covered a whole bunch of parts. Thank you for sitting down with this interview with me. No problem. So that's gonna do it for this installment of Customer Builds. Make sure that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this, as well as other product and install videos, and always keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.